Hello everyone, my name is Skylar Shi, and I'm here to tell you guys about my experience at the RSA 2022 conference. Before we start, please subscribe and like the video. Also, check out my other videos regarding how to pass Security Plus and Network Plus. The strategies I use are very effective to pass many IT certifications out there. They are built to maximize efficiency and study time, letting an individual pass with the least amount of time to prepare and also without much experience as well. Back to the main topic. If you don't know what RSA is, it is a cybersecurity conference that is held in San Francisco. So a little about me. I am a junior in high school and I went to this conference to learn about cybersecurity. Most people were adults seeking business opportunities. However, there were others like me who just wanted to know m more about modern technology the functions they performed, and what separated them from the rest of the competitors. I'll mention the word solutions a lot in this video, and solutions are essentially the product that the company is selling. So standardly, like I explained before, people go to RSA to find security solutions to get for their company. So as you can see in this demo, this individual is giving us a demo on Cyber Reason. You will see cyber reason more in this video, but what I want to demonstrate with this clip is that how these form how they format the demos. So what I love about them is that they're super interactive, which means that viewers ask questions and the people at the booth would converse more in depth about their product. It is built as a seller buyer format where various vendors advertise their solution. The next demo, Sentinel One. The second best endpoint security tool out there, which is one of my personal favorites in the way they present, is presenting their product, which is called an EDR, meaning Endpoint Detection Response. Anyways, the way he demonstrated um, his demo really stressed the ease and powerful ability this tool provides. The vendor first launches a ransomware tool, Lockbit, which encrypts data at a ransom. Obviously, the attack would have been stopped immediately, however, the vendor set the tool as detective mode to exhibit how a policy update can be proliferated through a whole company's network, thus eliminating the malware. Next, we have an illustration of an advertising strategy that companies employ to, in hopes of getting more partners. They will send invitations after ex the Expo conference and personally inquire of aspiring partners and hope to hook them in so they can make more profit. This company was Invicti and I was personally able to state my inquiry regarding differentiation between other companies to the chief production officer. Just for your curiosity, what separated them from the bunch was their high precision regarding reducing false positives. If you don't know what false positives are, they are basically when a test flags something as a threat when in reality it is not. Moving on to Microsoft Security. This vendor, who comes from Israel is an interesting fact, stresses the desire for logical grouping in their solution. And she explains how many companies vary in size. Thus, Microsoft allows variation without limiting their ability to help. Moving on, this clip just shows the first person perspective of navigating through the many booths. It is very lively in this conference and it seems that there's always something new to talk about. In this clip, we touch on Fortinet, which deals with asset management, which basically con consolidates a dashboard of a company's devices and information regarding it. Also, please excuse the shaky camera throughout this whole video and especially at this moment. I was recording but mostly listening with the most of my attentions, so my camera was moving a lot because I was, wasn't really looking at my camera. Next we have Cyber Reason which provides XDR which I mentioned before or actually no I haven't which stands for Extended Detention Response. It is basically EDR with an added future. of the, the vendor explains how containers, isolated software pieces are not inherently secure and thus it is important to implement runtime security. The Cyber Reason tool collects a lot of telemetry from different endpoints and the vendor explains how it is very onerous and complex to manage. However, Cyber Reason makes it simple with its aggregation to, easy, to an easy to understand timeline. 
Okay guys, right here it gets a little quiet, so adjust your volume to make it louder. My trip through the booth, I made you to take notes on what each company does. I took a lot of notes, so I'll touch on the big picture ideas for each company for the sake of time. First, in Invicti, um, which was mentioned before in the video. They specialize in app security. Their beat their their big threes are coverage, accuracy, and automation. Here is the tool for monitoring apps. You can schedule your scans and have specific scans for compliance reasons for like PCI. I also wanted to share an analogy that a demo spokesperson said, spokesman said. They explained how to text and respond can be compared to a neighborhood. EDR would be the tool at the door um, of each endpoint or house to protect against invaders. However, an NDR solution would provide neighborhood watch even before a burglar got to anyone's door. Also, here is a picture of a computer that uses quantum computing. Quantum computing is basically a high power computing system that uses quantum mechanics to boost computing capabilities. So as you can so as you can see, I mean so as you know, computers communicate in binary, which is via ones and zeros. However, quantum computers use qubits, which can act as multiple ones and zeros at the same time. This idea is, is super phenomenal because now these new computers can use moving electrons in a way that no one has ever used them before. Next, we have Fastly, which uses Graph IQL, which is a new WAF or web of application firewall that simplifies queries. What Fastly emphasizes a lot is their specialty for full blocking mode. They explain how many companies are scared of full blocking mode because of false positives. However, with Fastly, um, it has great simplification power, so companies will not get overwhelmed. Next, we have Arctic Wolf. They handle SOC, which is Security Operations Center, providing XDR. They basically alert customers, but have the customers fix the problems themselves. I was personally able to ask a question regarding if Arctic Wolf was an MSP, because it sounded like one, which means managed service, provi managed service provider. Although after this discussion, I was able to conclude that Arctic Wolf acted as more of a passive MSP. What is different about their company is their dynamic cost. They have their cost based on how big a company is and not the amount of data. This has pros and cons, but particularly this, particularly, this is good for companies to send in all their data. The vendor explained how companies will hold back on some of their data for cost purposes. However, this is obviously not the best for, from a security standpoint because you want to submit all your data so you can look at everything. Also, the retention goes up to 10 years. This booth was cool because it also had games on the second floor. Now, moving on to Zerto. Zerto does disaster recovery. Here are some slides I took from Zerto. By 2031, the fastest growing type of cybercrime is expected to attack a business, consumer, or device every two seconds. Total cost then will be $265 billion. Ransomware has become a board level challenge. What that means is that a board level challenge refers to the board of directors. Um, and they are basically the higher ups of the company, the executives. Here's a cool illustration that um, highlights all the aspects of ransomware in an iceberg analogy. And also this tool is described as powerful and resilient. Okay, now many events has like cool items to, to attract people in and this particular company had a cool looking car and I personally got to sit in one and take a picture. Okay, next we have a smaller booth called Mira Security. Here they do encrypted traffic orchestration. Basically the tools is your own deployed man in the middle but is used to detect malware. This allows the inspector to look inside the TLS encryption because hackers sneak their payload inside, right? So here is a picture of the de deployment options. They include passive decryption, inline passive, inline inline, and software integrated. All great topics to do all great topics to do research on if you're interested. Also, an interesting fact is that 90% of traffic in companies is encrypted, thus not visible. In cybersecurity, visibility is one of is in, into one's network is crucial. Another cool company that we visited 
was Interos. They deal with supply chain risk management. They have, they have a consolidated database of many companies that have been analyzed for risk posture. They ingest a lot of data about each company and have a standardized rating system. They have a score from 1 to 100, 100 being a low risk, and this provides transparency into your supply chain. Here's an example of a company's risk posture score. Oh, right here. Some other companies um, included SecureWorks, which is an MSP, and Microsoft Security, which has the importance of de-siloing and working with multi-cloud environments together. Unfortunately, I don't have good pictures for those, so this is all you see. But now, what, is, what everyone has been waiting for, CloudStrike, the number one EDR solution. CloudStrike does not use much CPU. It has a robust threat hunting system. The unique thing, of, the unique thing about CloudStrike is that it does not do any scanning. And you might be thinking, and how does it identify threats? It is all in the behavioral analytics. It makes sense because signature scans are not as effective as they used to be because of polymorphism. And that means the malware is always changing. You can see threats are you can see threats are always changing, thus CrowdStrike relies on behavior and thus dissects each attack, identifying parent and child processes, and, and can even identify the specific adversary group. Here's a picture of me next to Turbine Panda right here. Next we have CyberArk, which deals with privileged account management and identity security using auditing. A cool fact is that 40% of companies that experienced the largest breaches in the last decade turned to CyberArk. Now moving on to Tripwire. It's a change management tool that makes sure to include auditing and compliance. I also passed by many zero trust booths where they were hosted by Cisco and Palo Alto Networks. Um, I also visited Trellix, which loves the term living security, and their security tool is learning and adaptive, native and open, and expert and embedded. They also have their sister company, Sky High, which according to them is the number one CASB, which is um, Cloud um, Access Security Broker. Okay, now back to Microsoft's. Also, it is funny, because many people ask, why didn't Microsoft just build their PCs with security in the first place? Now here's the answer. They tried to, and they did. No one used it though. So instead they're trying to build something separate, joining the competition. They have Microsoft Defender, which is, an, which is an automated XDR, and Microsoft Sentinel, which allows you to combine everything being uh, a CM integration, okay? Also, another thing, Microsoft's products often cause confusion and people like me get mixed up with them all the time. Okay, so Court, you've probably heard of Office 365, that is the thing that comes with Microsoft Word and, and all those other products. But Microsoft also has Microsoft 365, which is um, the thing that comes with Microsoft Defender. They're different. Um, but you, you have to buy Microsoft Sentinel separately. Moving on, I visited Rapid7, um, which does vulnerability management. Also, it is funny because when I was doing more research on Rapid7, I found the following web page right here. Um, it doesn't show right here, but this is an, an, an Invicti advertisement. So what this shows is that they have a great marketing team. Anyways, Rapid7 specializes in, specializes in prioritizing vulnerabilities to address the most important ones um, in your company. It has a really cool UI in which you can set up goals and SLAs, which and SLAs are service level agreements. You can customize, you can also customize which vulnerabilities to address by the skill level of a hacker. This makes sure, this makes sure, uh, this makes sure you're, you can adjust vulnerabilities that can be exploited by the most inexperienced hackers. Next, we have Beyond Trust, which is another privileged access management. With Beyond Trust, you can employ flexing accounts. Also, administrators don't need to worry about passwords anymore because you can inject them. It provides temporary passwords. Their top three are their top three things are service count rotation, 
session management, auditing and compliance, and cyber insurance. Now for Horizon 3, for this company in particular, I have the opportunity to attend a private meeting. Using Horizon 3, you can automate penetration tests and verify fixed vulnerabilities. It is agentless and, agentless and runs on Docker containers. These pen tests look at DNS and exploit everything, providing proof to reveal everything. Okay? These are dynamic pen testing. So in case you don't know, there are two types of um, pen testing. There's dynamic and there's static. Static, static um, pen testing analyzes the source code itself. Okay? And dynamic is the overall whole thing as it functions. Okay, also, Horizon 3 allows you to customize the configurations um, which, 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 um, also, uh, just a plus you can, you can enable brute force as a pen test method, along with other options. Another fact is that it has 102 gigabytes package for tools. Another cool feature feature is that it obf obfuscates data. So the client can see that the exploit revealed the password without even seeing the actual password. Also a good thing about automating pen testing that the machine will find all pathways to exploitation. This is what separates a normal human being from this um, tool. You see, a normal human being will just be looking for one pathway and once they identify it, boom, that's the, that's the, that's the vulnerability right there, it's just been exploited. However, however the machines look at every possible, situ every possible pathway to get to that. Okay, also, this tool provides a comprehensive report in PDF format after you're done. So you can distribute it, share it with like the board directors, all, all those, all those people that need to know. Okay. A question and answer that was given is that Ventura, it is a com competitor with Horizon. And the top three things about Horizon 3 are number one, vulnerabilities, number two, reports, and three, retesting after remediation. Okay. Next, we have Tenable. It is a vulnerability manager. It is basically a Nessus copy. They use their own unique VPR, which is vulnerability priority rating, opposed to CVSS in Nessus. Okay, VPR takes into consideration other factors when making a rating. Now, on to SD WAN. We have Force Points. Um, the vendor in that company talked about how SD WAN just used, just used to be some new replacement for MPLS but now has greater capabilities. The big three in this company are resource optimization, optimization, site-to-site -site connectivity, and automated security. Lastly, we have four scouts. They do asset management. They use span, which are basically tabs like mirror scout, if you remember earlier in the video. And this consists of NetFlow and SFlow. And this is all that my notes have. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment, like the video, and share it and subscribe.